Unemployment, bankruptcy, homelessness, a global economic crisis. Should we be optimistic or pessimistic about our global economic recovery? Exploring the impact and seeking solutions, United Nations University presents UNU Conversation Series, The Economic Crisis. Welcome to this edition of the UNU Conversation Series on the Economic Crisis, organized in connection with the June 2009 UN Conference on the World Financial and Economic Crisis and its Impact on Development. I am Jean-Marc Quaco from the United Nations University. And with us here today at the UN, we have uh, Dr. Andy Kumana, who is the director of the research department of the African Development Bank. And uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about the African economic outlook in the context of the economic crisis. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Andy Kumana, why don't we uh, begin with the issue of the uh, uh, African growth in the context of the crisis? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about the African growth prospects in the context of the crisis. Um, last year, at this time, we were looking at a continent that was poised to make a turnaround, a historical turnaround, from decades of stagnation and uh, high poverty towards a path of high growth, reaching and exceeding the rate of 5% for over six, seven years. Now, after only a few, a few months into the crisis, we saw that, the, that growth prospect cut by, by half. Mm -hmm. And it, this makes us raise concerns about the ability to, of the continent to sustain growth in the long term. We are looking at a, at a continent that's going to, to grow at no more than 2.3%. This is a major concern because a 2.3% growth rate means that basically per capita incomes are going to be declining. And this is for the first time since 1994. So, so an immediate uh, translation of uh, loss of growth is going to be poverty. Uh, you also mentioned uh, in the conversation that we just had before uh, taping this interview that uh, other areas in which uh, the crisis is going to have an impact uh, have to do with uh, uh, fiscal uh, balance, uh, trade impact, uh, uh, the end perhaps of the commodity boom, uh, and also global retrenchment of capital. Could you talk about these various issues, beginning perhaps with uh, uh, the issue of fiscal balance? Yes, very important uh, to say that b when the crisis started, we were th hoping that the impact on, on Africa would be limited because of the low degree of, of uh, integration. But now we have seen that the second round effects have been large, mm -hmm. mainly operating through those, the very growth drivers that Africa has been able to capitalize on uh, to reach the high growth rate. This includes trade, uh, capital flows. And because of the decline in the trade uh, revenue, in export revenue, governments have seen um, a major decline in their revenue, uh, and this has reduced uh, uh, fiscal surpluses for those which had surpluses, and it has deteriorated the fiscal the fiscal deficits for those countries that were, which ha already had fiscal deficits. And at the same time, current account deficits are also declining, and we are looking at a continent which, in 2008, was recording a surplus and now is looking at a major deficit, which in fact is, is increasing, uh, is deepening as the crisis co continues. What about the, the, the end of the commodity boom and what does it mean for uh, resource-rich countries uh, and is it affecting probably less uh, non-resources-rich countries? Yes, the, the, the crisis has come with um, a major decline in global demand for commodities, in a major decline in prices of commodities, and this has, uh, has, has affected severely commodity exporters. Uh, including mineral e exporters and oil exporters. Um, this has translated in a uh, reduction in activity in the, in the mining, mining sector, which where we have seen companies cut down on, on uh, output, on uh, exploration investments, and this has translated in uh, a, a decline in employment. Mm -hmm. Many companies have reduced, impl uh, have, have, have cut down jobs, and as we, as we, as we look forward, we, we are concerned about the impact on living standards. As people lose jobs, 
incomes, uh, household income decline, and we're going to see um, uh, a, a sliding uh, back, countries sliding back in terms of progress towards reducing poverty. Another another issue that you mentioned, which is going to be uh, quite important for the future, is what you call a global retren retrenchment of capital. So, first of all, what do you? It's a technical term. Uh, what do you mean exactly by uh, retrenchment of capital? And uh, you know, once we know what it means, uh, what does it entail exactly? Yes. One one of the effects of the crisis has been uh, drying up of liquidity in the international markets. Mm -hmm. Uh, the financial crisis in Europe, in Africa, has, uh, in, in, in the US, <clears throat> has meant that appetite for investment in Africa and the ability of foreign investors to invest in Africa has declined. Mm -hmm. And this has unfortunately re reversed a very promising trend, a very promising trend of uh, high in, uh, FDI inflows in Africa, which we had seen over the past years. This was, of course, attracted by the oil and mineral sector, but also in services. Mm -hmm. We have seen um, uh, an increase in FDI in service, uh, service sectors, including the ICT sector, and this trend is, is tapering off. 2008 was good in terms of FDI, but we worry that 2009 will see a major decline in FDI. The same thing for remittances. Mm -hmm. Remittances have been a major source of, of, uh, of development financing. In fact, reaching the same level of, as, o, as ODA in some countries. Mm -hmm. In some countries, even exceeding ODA. It's, and very we, it's a very important source of financing. It's very stable. It's, it doesn't I I imply uh, debt. You don't have to repay remittances, and countries can really harness this source of financing if they fi can find strategies to minimize the cost of transfers, but also strategies to uh, diversify the allocation of remittances away, uh, in addition to consumption, uh, also encouraging remittances to go into investment. What about the, the, the stock market? I mean, you know, you, you talked about uh, earlier in our conversation once again uh, the importance of savings. So I was a bit surprised that, in fact, uh, uh, the stock market is quite important in the African context and that uh, the level of savings have, have been in certain cases quite high. So tell us a bit about the stock market, savings and so on, and what it means in the current context. Yes, in the, in the effect of the stock, on the stock market has been more um, visible in um, countries with developed uh, stock markets, yes. South Africa, Egypt, uh, Nigeria which have large stock markets and open stock markets. Mm -hmm. The reality is that in those stock markets, you had a uh, quite substan substantial amount of foreign presence mm -hmm. in uh, uh, companies, foreign companies investing in, tho in those markets. So when the crisis started, these companies started calling back their capital, mm -hmm. and this has reduced the market capitalization in the, in this company in, in this in this uh, in this market what you also see is that behind the stock indices mm -hmm. is the value of companies mm -hmm. company value has declined in some ca cases cut by half which means that people's assets people's savings are affected dramatically and this reduces the incentives for savings, reduces the, the, the incentives for, for investment. In fact, what, when you look at, at uh, absolute, I mean, uh, relative losses in terms of market capitalization, we find that stock markets in African countries in, in, in some cases have lost more than European markets, US market in relative value. Okay. Uh, what about the timeline uh, that we're talking about here? What about uh, you know? Is it, in other words, is it fair to 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 uh, uh, to attribute uh, these uh, these problems to the crisis itself? Uh, is, is there direct causation between the crisis and these uh, these problems regarding uh, fiscal balances, uh, trade impact? I mean, trade issues, commodity, the end of the commodity boot and, uh, boom, and and etc. Etc. Yes, I think we, it, it is clear that the impacts that we are seeing on trade, revenue, macroeconomic balances are directly linked to the crisis. Mm -hmm. In the sense that the crisis has come and has affected global demand for primary commodities. Mm -hmm. It has affected trade financing. Many foreign banks have either withdrawn their, their promises for lines of credit, they have reduced the amount of li lines of credit that they, they give to African exporters and importers, and this has made it uh, more difficult for, for African 
companies to, to export mm -hmm. and it has made it more difficult for African banks to confirm lines of credit. Mm -hmm. So it is true that these effects on trade, on revenue, are directly linked yeah. to the crisis. It is my understanding that the level of intra-trade in Africa is very low. Uh, you mentioned the figure of 10%. Uh, uh, would this level of intra-trade intra be higher? Would it be a source of, uh, of resilience for, uh, for African countries? And, and, and why is it so low at the moment? Yes, it, it is true that uh, intra-Africa trade is very low, less than 10% of total African trade. But we have also seen that intra-Africa trade is more resilient to the crisis in the sense that export orders have been fulfilled even after the crisis, whereas we have seen export orders in, uh, uh, that are oriented globally being cut or delayed, which means that should Africa manage to develop intra-Africa intra trade, this will be a major source for weathering any other crisis like this, shocks to international, inter international demand. The reason why, uh, there are many reasons why uh, intra-Africa trade is low. One is lack of diversity in, in, in production, mm -hmm. countries producing the same, the same, the same products. Mm -hmm. The second so is... On the, on the same market? On the same, they, they, they're looking for, for the same market. The second one is, is lack of infrastructure that facilitates uh, uh, movement of goods. The moving goods from a country to another is still very, very costly. Roads are bad, railroads don't exist, air traffic is, 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 not, is, is, uh, is, is low and it's expensive. And the other reason is uh, the regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. There's simply too many hoops to go through if you want to move goods from a country to another. And in, in terms of policy response, there are things that countries in Africa can do even without the need for foreign aid. Mm -hmm. uh, streamlining the regulatory environment to encourage trade does not need much ODA. It requires the goodwill of government, uh, governments in Africa to do it. Uh, increasing infrastructure, Im improving the quality and the quantity of infrastructure, that will need heavy investment by, uh, in terms of uh, heavy uh, financing by both governments in Africa but also the, the development partners. And the private sector. And the private sector. Mm -hmm. And we have seen some good uh, initiatives in, in, in private public uh, partnerships where Inv investments have been uh, have been uh, able to to be implemented because of uh, infusion of private private investments, and we want to s we want to see countries in Africa encouraging more and more of of that uh, those PPPs arrangements. In, in essence, you are saying that in fact uh, good macro policies are, are key for uh, being able to really handle things uh, better. In fact, uh, you, you know you were saying earlier that uh, uh, non-resource-rich uh, countries, uh, some of them in Africa, have done quite well, partly because of excellent or good, strong uh, macro policies. Um, and 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 you would say that this is a, a great source of resilience for countries in fact as this is a very important point as we look beyond the crisis we, we w must answer, uh, ask ourselves how does africa come come out of the crisis stronger mm -hmm. and ready to grow a number of things are critical one is to pursue consistent prudential macroeconomic policies to preserve macroeconomic stability. This is what got us where we were before the crisis with higher growth rates. The second area is maintaining high levels of investment in key sectors such as infrastructure. This will, is what is going to unlock the potential of the private sector. The third one is create an environment to, that encourages private investment in major infrastructure through PPPs by uh, reducing the cost of, 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 of transaction by, the, by reducing the cost of credit. The third, the third area is to, to pursue policies to, for increasing financial intermediation, access to finance for, for large companies, but also access to finance for small and medium enterprises, especially moving finance, moving access to finance to the rural area so that we can encourage non-agriculture uh, activities. Uh, in this connection, I mean, do you see uh, a strategic role which could be played by uh, microfinance? I understand that microfinance is very important in, in Southeast Asia because it's partly, it was partly inv invented over there. So, but at the moment, uh, 
uh, is microfinance playing an important role and do you see microfinance playing an even important more important role in the future uh, in Africa yes microfinance is is one component of a strategy for broadening the base for development increasing access to credit and developing the rural area mm -hmm. we know that the banking sector sector in africa is still underdeveloped it's very thin and it's focused on the formal sector yes. don't blame them the risk is much higher in the in the informal sector mm -hmm. but we know that the informal sector including the rural area is where the majority of the population is is the sector that cre that that's creating the most the most employment so you need an, an a new tier to develop the tier of financial institutions that cater for the micro microfinance um, um, uh, small and medium enterprises the rural the rural sector and this is microfinance the problem the challenges with mi microfinance is lack of cap capital mm -hmm. and lack of uh, technology to monitor and assess assess risk mm -hmm. Lack of capital, this is something where the government has to come in strongly with the use of development finance institutions to provide capital to microfinance, but also encouraging the, the, pri the private banks to channel some of the excess liquidity into financing microfinance. Perhaps a uh, uh, last question, Mr. Andy Kumena. Uh, are you optimistic about uh, you know the the, the future, the, the near future of Africa uh, following the crisis? I mean, do you think that in the end uh, uh, Africa will be able to somehow uh, find resources out of this crisis? Yes, we are. We are at the bank. We are very optimistic about about the future of the continent in the post-crisis period for several reasons. One, we believe that Africa, the, the crisis found a stronger, much better positioned Africa in terms of ma the capacity to manage macroeconomic policies. We believe that. Uh, the, uh, the demand for global for, for African exports, including primary commodities, is going to remain high in the in the post-crisis era. And if the fiscal stimulus that have been impl implemented in in the U.S., in Europe, and Asian countries can, uh, to, to the extent that they're going to produce a, a positive impact uh, and and uh, encourage recovery, a global recovery in demand co uh, combined with prudential macroeconomic policies, sustained uh, investment in, in, in infrastructure will propel Africa to a higher growth rate. Mm -hmm. That's what we believe. Thank you, sir. Um, we, we just had a conversation with uh, Dr. Andy Kumana, who is the director of the research department of the African Development Bank, and we had this conversation on the eve of the UN uh, conference uh, on the world economic uh, crisis and its impact on development uh, scheduled for the end of June. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Andy Kumana, thank you for your, for your insights, and please uh, come back and talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.